All right, y'all. I, I found this very interesting. So Sweetie was on Big Boy in the morning. And um, Big Boy was asking Sweetie about if she's ever had a paranormal encounter. And I haven't watched the full conversation, but essentially it gets to the point where Sweetie, she says that she has to sleep with gospel music in order to cleanse her room of these demonic spirits. Now, if you don't know who Sweetie is, Sweetie's a rapper, um, secular rapper. Honestly, just watching this interview with Sweetie, and I've never seen a, a Sweetie interview in my life besides this one. She seems like a very sweet girl. She seems like a very genuine hearted person. Um, she just seems very lost, like spiritually lost in terms of like doesn't know Christ. So and that's every single one of us fell into that category at one point in our life. Right. And then we all had an encounter of some sort with God and then we were forever changed. And now we're walking with Christ. That's what I want for everybody, right? And when you hear stories like this of Sweetie being aware of the spiritual realm, being aware of the spiritual activity that's going on, and essentially being aware of the spiritual warfare, it's almost like it's one step to getting someone closer to understanding that like, yo, if you believe that these spirits are real, if you believe that these principalities, these dark principalities are real, how could you not believe that God is real? Because if there's darkness, then there has to be light. So I pray that sweetie comes to know Christ. We'll see what happens. Let's play this interview and then I'll give you my feedback and my commentary. Hates scary movies. I so I don't like paranormal movies. I believe in spirits. Mm -hmm. I believe that I'm going to jump through the screen. Really no. <laughs> have you ever had one of those moments cuz yes. I know I have. No, yes, ever since I was a little girl, I've had paranormal experiences. Explain one or explain. Yeah. <laughs> what people think I'm crazy. Hey, man. No, Anybody that say they nah. think you... Uh, I think everyone has had an experience. All right, you share if yours and I'll share mine. Okay, so... I, I, and I'll just give you one. Mm -hmm. Years ago, when I was 12 years old, you uh -huh. know, we were going through something and we were homeless. So we were living with another family, right? Mm -hmm. And my brother Mouse and I, we were laying in the, in the back in like a den area, but it was on, on like a tile, like linoleum floor. We just put like the, you know, blankets out there and we just lay, lay that's where we slept at. Mm -hmm. And so we just started hearing things, mm -hmm. hearing things, you know what I'm saying? And I remember I was asleep and I heard like bare feet walking past my head. Like mm -hmm. if you were barefoot on like a tile, like linoleum floor, mm -hmm. I heard the slapping of the feet. Mm -hmm. 12 years of age, I didn't open up my eyes and look immediately. And then when I did, Saweetie, open up my eyes, I looked at the curtain mm -hmm. and there was a face of a man with like kind of a thin face. Mm -hmm. And he had like a like like kind of like a derby hat, so on and so forth. But I could see this man. Mm -hmm. And so the next morning mm -hmm. I told my brother what was going on. He was like, man, he said, Kurt, when I was asleep, I was hearing things, too. We didn't hear it, share it together mm -hmm. until we woke up the next morning. Then when I told the family we were living with, I just seen them. They start crying. Mm. And it was like our dad, you described our dad. Our dad had a thin face. Our dad had the, you know, he would wear his hat all the time. So it was a friendly experience. It was it was friendly. Mm. That one was friendly. Then another time, you know how when you're doing like the water jug, when you put a five gallon of water yeah. and when it gets that. I don't, I don't believe in that. I don't believe in that. I don't believe in like ghost of dead people walking this earth. I don't believe in that. If you're seeing a ghost of somebody who passed away in your life, you're not seeing that person. You're seeing a familiar spirit. You're seeing a demon. Because these familiar spirits, they can get close to people. They can get so close to people that they start to understand who that person is, who their family is, what they like, what they don't like, their personality, how they talk. And they start to mimic it. I don't think we're seeing dead people walk and roam this earth. Those are demons. Those are demonic spirits. Those are that that's a demonic presence. That's what I think. What do y'all think? Yeah. I remember one time, dude, I was I heard the, the I heard the shh. Then I heard the glue glue. Mm -hmm. And they say he used to love to get water from out of that 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 uh, uh so it was a good experience. Yeah, those you had bad ones? 
Man, there be some shit going on. Oh, yeah, that's like, why you slow on yours. No, so, like, I don't know how I was set up to be this involved with the spiritual world. So, for one, like, the apartment I grew up in had a lot of paranormal activity. Mm-hmm. Um, when I go to sleep at night, if I'm not sleeping next to somebody, I have to play gospel. I have to play gospel music. To this day? To this day. Wow. Or I'll get attacked. Like wow. that sleep paralysis, like I'll get yeah. that. I, but I get that every time if I don't play gospel music when I sleep. That's wow. Uh-huh. So you always got to make sure road, whatever, like for you. If I'm by myself, yes, I have to play it because I'll get it. Like, I don't know what that's called and I got to do more research. Right. But and when I, you, Yeah. My goodness. Family just came home making all the type of noise. Um, yeah, that's called a demonic attack. There's there's real spiritual warfare happening all around us. And if you're getting hit spiritually every single night to the point where you have sleep paralysis every single night, there's healing for that. There's deliverance for that. There's freedom from that that you have access to that you're just not tapping into. Look, the gospel music... If that gets you to a place to where, you know, it helps you kind of relax, that's cool. But the gospel music is not going to save you because, you know, sometimes some of these people who are singing, you know, gospel songs and who are worshiping. They not even save themselves. So how can that save you? It might give you some sort of comfort. But at, at the end of the day, the only thing that can save you is the blood of Jesus Christ. The only thing that can save you is the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. And that's available freely to everybody as a gift. So like if you want true healing and true freedom from that, you have to submit, you have to repent, you have to give your life to Jesus Christ. You have to put your faith in Jesus Christ. Because just like I was saying in the previous video, we have power and authority over all of these spiritual, you know, principalities in the spirit realm, the demons, the, we all of that. We have authority and power over it. Through Jesus Christ, we have to put our faith in Jesus Christ and he gives us the power and he gives us the authority. But until that point, if you're not going to do that, then you're going to keep putting a bandaid over it. But it's so interesting. You have these people who are clearly getting attacked in the spiritual realm. At what point do you think they just fully submit to Jesus and let Jesus take control? Like, are you going to keep doing this for your entire life? You're going to keep putting up with this for your entire life? There's already victory for the battle that you are facing right now. And that victory is in Jesus Christ. Go to Jesus. He'll give you all power and all authority in the spiritual realm to handle all of that activity that's happening at night. But you got to go to Jesus. A text, Saweetie, what do you mean? Like in my dream. Right. Like, you know, you can't wake yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> and you feel like somebody's sitting on top of you. Yes, man. Like, it's, it's real. And especially when I started, like, meditating more, I felt like the stronger I became spiritually, the more I started getting attacked. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, because you're opening up the wrong doors. With this meditation, with this new age stuff, with, I don't know exactly what she's into, but if the source is not Jesus Christ, then you're opening up the wrong doors. If you're dabbling, even in like yoga and stuff like that, like if you're dabbling in that, there's a potential that you could be opening up doors and these doors are going to remain open until you exercise your power and authority that's been given to you by Jesus Christ, just like I talked about. And like these experiences have always happened to me like since... Since I was a kid, you know, and I think like my craziest experience. So me and my homegirl, it was like the summer I was like 14 or 15 and we up, you know, gossiping, talking shit, laying down in like my my room, hot summer night. She goes to the bathroom and I'm laying down on my bed. I feel something hella big start walking on top of me. I'm wide awake. Wow. But you can feel it. No, like I'm. I could feel it. It's like walking on top of me, but I already know what time it is because I grew up in like a, like I just know what time it is because I've been experiencing this type of stuff since I was a kid. And I start like crying and I'm like, 
because I, I just know what's happening. And a voice goes, shut up. And you know a, a that one hundred percent. A deep ass, like a deep ass voice. It says, "Shut up!" And I just start like, I just feel so. Um, Could you move helpless. then, even no. when you were awake? I, I was I, like, I froze, but I didn't freeze because I couldn't move. I froze out of fear. Mm-hmm. But ever since then, like I told my grandma, and you know, I say Jesus every time or I start praying, you know, because um, that's my way of fighting back. You can't just say stop. You have to say, you know, in the name of God and the name of Jesus, because that's going that's the person who's gonna protect you. But it's like those experiences, like it's crazy when you different when you're dealing with two different worlds at one time. Because not everybody knows what it right. feels like to have a paranormal experience, mm-hmm. and especially like that and continuous. And no matter where you go, Mm-mm. you know how some some places it's tied to a place. You know, mm-hmm. I remember Sweetie when my mom passed. Right, mm-hmm. I remember I was laying in the bed and I wasn't asleep. Mm-hmm. I wasn't asleep. I believe you. And I remember I felt, you know what, like when somebody's on the bed and they get off yep. and you can feel the weight shift. Yes. I felt the weight shift, mm-hmm. right? And not that it was rocking me, but I felt the weight shift. I felt the mattress move. Whew. And then when I looked up, I literally saw, visually saw my mom walking out the room. Mm-hmm. And at that time, I was like, mom, I really, you know, this is beautiful, but I really, she had just kind of like passed. I was like, I really can't handle this right now. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It was beautiful, but I knew I couldn't handle it. I was, I was in so many different directions. Uh-huh. But I understand what you're saying, mm-hmm. One, and especially if yours is moving around. Uh-huh. Have you had? Have you tested it where you say, I'm not going to play the gospel music tonight just to make sure that it was that? Oh, no, I don't play. Yeah. Cause when I do, because sometimes if I have to make a decision, I'm going to put that gospel music on. Yeah. Because I just, every time I don't sleep with it, it happens to me every time. Every time. It's like the gospel music is my protection. I heard that. Man, I'm, I'm done with for real, for real right there. <laughs> I see what she's saying. I mean, she she spoke some truth. She said that, you know, the name of Jesus is powerful. And these demons know what's up. These demons know who Jesus is. And they tremble. They shudder. These demons know what's up. But then she said, you know, it's like it's almost like the gospel music is my protection. The gospel music is not your protection. Jesus Christ is your protection. What's that verse? Um, It's like my name, you know, my name is on their tongue, but their hearts are far from me. Just because you're saying Jesus, Jesus, Jesus doesn't mean that you've given your life to Jesus. It doesn't mean that you've given your life to Jesus. It doesn't mean that you've, you know, repented and turned away from your old lifestyle and made the the decision to put your faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. There's a difference. You can talk about Jesus, and then you could actually submit to Jesus and make Jesus the Lord of your life. Because when Jesus is the Lord of your life, you're still going to get attacked, probably even more. You're going you're to have more spiritual warfare. You're going to have more attacks of not just you, but of people all around you, your friends, your family. They're all going to get attacked. But just like I said, there's power and authority that has been given to you over all of these spirits and principalities in the spiritual realm. And you have to exercise that. And when I say exercise, I'm not saying like an exorcism, but I'm saying like, you have to use that power and authority that is available to you. The power doesn't come from the gospel music. The gospel music can't save you. Only Jesus can do that. Hold on, let me see if I can look something up real fast. Trying to see if I can find something um, about familiar spirits. Because I'm drawing a blank from a, a biblical perspective when it comes to familiar spirits. Okay, so it says, what are familiar spirits? So it says, the word familiar is Latin, meaning a household servant, is an, and is intended to express the idea that sorcerers had spirits as their servants ready to obey their commands. 
Those attempting to contact the dead, even to this day, usually have some sort of spirit guide who communicates with them. These are familiar spirits. Levitic Leviticus 19, 31, 26, and 27, and Deuteronomy 18, 9 to 14, refer to mediums and familiar, and familiar spirits being involved with them as they are an abomination to the Lord. A medium is one who acts as a liaison to supposedly contact or communicate with the dead on behalf of the living. In reality, mediums are contacting demons who convince the mediums that they are familiar and can be trusted and believed. This is exactly what I was saying. This was, this was exactly what I was saying. You think, even from Big Boy's uh, perspective, Big Boy said that, um, he said that he was sitting in his room and he saw his mom. His mom just walked by. But his mom had just passed away. But he saw the spirit of his mom just walk by. Like, like I'm not trying to be rude, but that wasn't your mom. That was a familiar spirit. That was a familiar spirit. Mediums, in reality, mediums are contacting demons who convince the mediums that they are familiar and can be trusted and believed. God calls this an abomination in Leviticus and Deuteronomy. The practices associated with mediums and familiar spirits were banned in Israel, and the punishment for practicing such things was death. Familiar spirits and spirit guides are under the control of their master, Satan. They influence people to spread lies and deceit in order to throat to th throat. What is that? What is that word? Thart? Throat? Hold on. Y'all y'all see how uneducated I am. <laughs> I'll try to figure out what that means, bro. Um Prevent someone from accomplishing something. Okay. Okay. So they're trying to influence people to spread lies and deceit in order to prevent the kingdom of God. So basically in order to, you know, cast uh, deceit and, and, and sow seeds of confusion so that people don't turn to God. To knowingly open oneself to the work of demons is an evil thing. Let no one be found among you who sacrifices his son or daughter in fire, who practices div divination or sorcery, interprets omens, engages in uh, witchcraft, or casts spells, or who is a medium or spiritist who consults the dead. Anyone who does these things is detestable to the Lord. Deuteronomy 18, 10, 12. Some avenues through which familiar spirits, oh, this is interesting, some avenues through which demons or familiar spirits can gain interest into uh, entrance into a person's life are divin divin divination, transcendental meditation, new age visualization, neurochromacy, oh my gosh. At this point, it's like, do I even post this? Like my IQ, like literally you would think my IQ was like nine. Uh, witchcraft, drugs, and alcohol. These are all activities that believers are exhorted to avoid. Or in the case of alcohol, limit. Instead, we are to be filled with the Holy Spirit, with love, with joy, and with the fullness of life that comes from Jesus Christ. We are also to be on guard for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Ephesians 6.12. I think that pretty much supports all of the points that I was trying to make in this video. You know? I, I don't know. I think I still kind of struggle with, like we have somebody like Sweetie and she said it herself um, she said that her grandma would tell her in Jesus name that you need to rebuke those things. Right. 
I, I, I would like to know a little bit more about Sweetie's faith, exactly what she believes in, exactly what she put her faith in. Like, what do you have your faith in? Is it in Jesus Christ? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Is Jesus God? Like, I want to know these things about Sweetie because from an outsider looking in, it doesn't look like she knows Jesus. I'm just basing it off of her, her chosen career, her chosen profession, what she chooses to glorify on a daily basis, the songs that she chooses to create, to put out to the masses of people. It's almost like the same person who's tormenting you every single night, the same person who's keeping you in bondage every single night has actually become your master. I'm talking about Satan. That's almost what it kind of appears just based on the content that she's choosing to produce and the content that she's choosing to put out to the world to consume. Because that comes from the heart. The wickedness that we see materialize on earth, it comes from the wicked desires of the heart. So you're either serving the wicked desires of your heart, which does not come from God, which comes from Satan, or you're serving God. And that's not to say that you're going to be perfect, but that's to say that the fruit of your faith is going to be evident in the works that you produce for God. That's all I'm saying. So I hope that sweetie gets saved. I hope that she comes to Christ. It's very um it's very unsettling knowing that people are actively going through spiritual warfare and there's literal healing that is available to them right now in this very moment and they just don't know it or they just don't want to accept it. You know, so I don't know. Let me know what y'all think. Get in my comments. I'm out, y'all.